Hi, this is your host, Swapnil Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. But this time we are in person at KubeCon and CloudEducon in Valencia, EU. And today we have with us once again, Miska Kaipinian, your VP of Engineering of Strategy and Open Source at Mirantis. If I said the title correct or if anything changed so far. No, it was perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. First of all, it's great to see you in person uh, after a long gap. Second is that uh, this is, I think, the first KubeCon of this year. <laughs> there will be more to come. So first of all, tell us, you know, you have been, uh, the, you know, of course, the showcase area. Uh, you have attended sessions and keynotes. What kind of energy you see this time? No, it's so, so beautiful to see this cloud native community finally after these troubling years to come together again in, in you know, in person, really, and, uh, and to see all this energy uh, on, the, on the floor. So... So this has been great so far. Of course, I've been very busy uh, with uh, many, many meetings, uh, but uh, I think it looks very promising for the cloud native. Perfect. And of course, you know, when we're talking cloud native, we have to talk about Mirantis Lens, you know, the open source product is there and the product is also there. Uh, there has been a lot of, you know, user growth, 600,000 more than that users. Uh, so I, first of all, I want to just, you know, remind our viewers uh, who have been uh, watching our uh, shows earlier? Could you tell us, you know, what is because Lens has been evolving also, right? So talk, you know, what Lens is doing today. Uh, anything new, exciting that you know you can share with us today? Yeah. So to recap, basically, Lens uh, we introduced it to market like two years ago. So when we came out with Mirantis uh, with this uh, Lens open source project, so two years ago we had fifteen thousand. Users for Lens today, uh, 600,000 more than that. Uh, so the expansion for the user growth that has been truly amazing, and uh, it shows that uh, what we are doing is is people are seeing it being very valuable. So people are seeing that it will help them to actually cope with this. Some say very difficult technology, but actually with Lens we are trying to make it more simple for people. Uh, so. Some of the new functionalities that we have been working on, uh, more details will come in the, in the coming weeks and uh, months. Uh, but uh, I can reveal so, mu so much that uh, some of the functionality is related to security. So making security more, people more aware about the potential security uh, issues that they might be having. Um, and uh, another part is that uh, even more integration in the local development uh, workflow, so having additional tools and technologies, uh, integrations in Lens in that area. You said, you know, from 15,000 to 600,000 or more than that, which also kind of reflects the adoption of cloud native itself is growing. So if I may ask, you know, just like a higher level overview as well, you know, that what kind of trends are you seeing in that space? Because you talked about some new features that you folks are working on, which also kind of, it's, it's not the future you're building because you want, it's because you're seeing something is happening and you're reacting to that. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so what we can see from our users is that of course it's no secret that um, public cloud is growing. So when we, when we came out two years ago, I think uh, it was uh, around 60% uh, uh, of the, all the deployments that we were able to see, uh, they were actually happening in public clouds. And today it's a, somewhere around 75% of the, and uh, AWS, uh, EKS is on lead. Uh, so for context, we are seeing like over half a million clusters are being operated with Lens on a daily basis. So from those clusters, 28% or so are on AWS. And um, followed by Azure uh, AK, AKS, uh, around 22% or so, and, um, and uh, GKE in uh, 16%. So, so that's what we, ca we can see, and then some other public, cloud, other public cloud vendors as well. So yeah, move to cloud, obvious. Uh, and uh, yeah, also I think the number of users starting to use Lens, it very much reflects, as you said, uh, also the adoption of the cloud native. It's becoming more mainstream, I would say, uh, nowadays. Maybe there is not so much hype anymore, uh, but it's being getting used in production more and more uh, all the time. Excellent. One more thing I'm curious about is when we do look at these cloud native or Kubernetes, you know, technologies, 
the spectrum of user base is like you have you know heavily tech companies big you know big giants you know who are and then you also have a lot of smaller players they're also embracing and using kubernetes which also means that uh, the level of expertise that big companies have versus smaller companies have is also different which brings the back to the point of making it easier to use we also see a lot of adoption of low code no code also so anything else that you're seeing from the perspective of more people are using it and not everybody is a big tech company so I think Kubernetes is a great equalizer in terms of technical capabilities. So now with the help of Kubernetes, even the smaller kind of players are capable of doing things that were only available for the biggest kind of uh, technologically advanced companies in the, you know, in the past. So, so now it's more like a, everybody's on an equal ground. So now it's more about how much innovation you can create on top of this uh, technology. And, um, that's exciting to see all these cool new technologies that are not so much anymore about building the foundation of the Kubernetes, but stuff that is going to be built on top. And uh, that's what I'm seeing. From Mirantis, we have also covered, you know, DevOps gear, and, you know, there's a lot of talk about that as well. So just, you know, first of all, you know, give us an update on what's going on there. Yeah, so DevOps care, uh, it's the new uh, managed service offering uh, by Mirantis and it's the same for all the people uh, who are using Kubernetes on any infrastructure. So the users, they might be on, on EKS and, or, or some other infrastructure. So we're, we are basically trying to help be their co-pilot uh, in their efforts while they are introducing the cloud native technologies in their products and in their services. We try to help them with uh, setting up a um, nice way how to operate their CI CD pipelines, how to do the infra automation system. So basically, yeah, being like their co pilot, we are not trying to do outsourcing. So we are not outsourcing business, but yeah, being their trusted partner, co pilot uh, for their efforts and basically accelerating their time to value uh, with their efforts. So that's the kind of core. Uh, kind of value of, of the um, DevOps care offering. Earlier we were talking about trend and I, you know, I would just like uh, listening to you, uh, helping folks. One more thing that we are happening, this is nothing new, which is a shift led focusing on, you know, uh, security a lot is going on there as well. And you were also talking about one of some of the features that you folks are focusing on will be security. So talk about, you know, once again, going back to the point of, you know, the trends you're seeing in the space is also reflecting on the product itself. So uh, first of all, if I ask you simply, how would you define, you know, shift left? And then, you know, let's talk about it from the Mirantis or less perspective. Yeah, well, for me, shift left is if you think about the word DevOps. And uh, for me, you know, the way how I read it, you know, it's from left to right. And Dev is on the left. And uh, so for me, shift left is that we are more and more empowering developers to do some critical decisions. And, uh, and we are trying to automate as much as possible for the ops part of things. And now for developers to make the good choices, so they require new type of ways how they can observe things. It's not just about writing code anymore. It's also to see how the changes they are making re are reflected in reality and, and the applications and services that are, that are operating, how they can see that in real time and make adjustments on the, in their code uh, accordingly. So yeah, for me, shift left, left is, all about more and more empowering developers and becoming on a pilot seat uh, of, of uh, when creating new applications and services. Right, and you also touched upon, you know, when developer are writing something, they should be able to see, you know, and that's what we also talk about in Ops world also, you know, you know, observability, you know, once you know how things are running, but when we talk about, first of all, things are evolving, just what happened and then based on what happened, you analyze it, but then you have to do something about it too. Yes. So how do you think that, you know, all of this will together? So shifting left means, you know, when you're writing the code, it starts all the way from there. Yes, absolutely. So <clears throat> traditionally, they have been a little bit separate. So we have different systems. So if we have very separate, like uh, operations teams, so they have created these beautiful dashboards where they are, monitoring basically the health of the system, if I may. And uh, now with the shift left, 
we have these teams of developers who don't actually even have access to see the health of the entire system. They are scoped in the small, small island, but they are, they are basically fully managing this island. And, and we need to provide tools and technologies that are designed for that purpose, not for this entire kind of uh, infrastructure monitoring, but for the specific applications. And, and that's where Hel Lens has been very helpful for many of its users. Amiska, thank you so much for you know, joining me today. Also, as I said earlier, also in person, it's a different excitement to, to, to sit with somebody in the same room and talk about things like that. And I would love to do the things like this in person in future as well, but we cannot have KubeCon every month. So uh, I, I'm hopeful to see you soon in our virtual uh, interview and we'll talk about a lot of things that you folks are working on. So thanks for your time today. Absolutely, thank you very much.